everybody and welcome back to Jazzy61. So today's video is actually going to be kind of an impromptu video. Um, I had decided to make the peanut butter stew this morning and my mother mentioned why don't you just make the video about it and I forgot and then someone asked me about it literally today. So I'm going to kind of go ahead and make this video for you guys. I wanted to say hello and welcome. If you are new here, my name is Jazz. I do everything motherhood lifestyle. A little bit of beauty every now and again when I can pull it off. And I post on Mondays at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I would love it if you would subscribe today before you leave. And welcome back to my returners and new subscribers. There's probably a few of you guys in here who have asked me about this because I have been getting asked about this for about a year now. Two years actually. Yeah. So welcome back, you guys, and I hope you all enjoy today's video. So as I mentioned, you guys, we were making the peanut butter stew. This is an African peanut butter soup. You can, they call it soup. They call it stew. They also call it like mafe. It just depends on which part of Africa you come from. As you all know, my husband is West African, and we went over there, and I found out that this is one of actually his favorite dishes. And I started trying to tinker with it back then. It took me forever. <laughs> I started tinkering with the recipe in about 2017. I perfected it in about 2019. Been making it ever since and it disappears pretty quickly. So my mama will make some for her. So I'm going to make some today, you guys. I do not have all those, the ingredients just laid out, but I will tell you everything as I am trying to put it together for you guys. So, uh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and make this African peanut butter soup. Or African peanut butter stew. Whichever one you want to call it, you guys. I hope you enjoy this video. I'm trying to get through some of the ingredients right now. I will tell you the seasonings as I use them. So I will be using some stew meat, you guys. Um, the, there's going to be a few differences in how I do it and how um, a lot of African ladies make it. Um, over here, because I don't cook some of the same ingredients as you guys may possibly know because we're not from the same place and they have different ingredients. One thing that they do use differently is the oils. So it depends on where you go. The oil will be different. They have palm oil. They have, um, what's it called? I know palm oil is one. It's like a red oil. Um, anyway, it's different oils. Their peanut butter is different because it is freshly made daily. They just kind of ground down peanuts and I tried to find the least sweet peanut butter I could find. So I got a natural peanut butter over here. And then they also fry their meat. I boil mine and then I use the broth to also add a bit more flavor to the stew itself. So yeah, so stew meat is one of the ingredients. I also use a sort of peppers and onions. I use a white onion, a red onion. I use bell peppers. I use minced ginger and water, you guys. I will show you that here in a second as well. Um, let me see what else I put in there. And tomatoes are some of the biggest ingredients that you're gonna find in here today, as well as the peanut butter, of course. So let's go ahead and start on some of this other stuff that I've already started to dissect before I realized I was gonna make this video. And I'll tell you guys what that is as we go along. Alrighty, you guys. So this is where the, um, not exactly guesswork, because like I said before, you guys, sometimes when I season, I don't measure. So I'm gonna kind of give you guys some roundabout estimates of what I've put in here. So I've added water to this pot. I also added one pack of the stew meat that I get from Walmart um, that I drain and rinse and things like that, because sometimes it has a lot of blood on it. I don't wanna add a whole bunch of blood to this. Um, so I've drained and rinsed it off, or whatever, you guys. And in this pot, there is water. I did about a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder, and then about half a tablespoon of this Maggie seasoning. Now, this is the chicken one. I like to use the chicken because I like the way the chicken tastes, um, and it's the one that I found that's the best flavor so far. I have this huge bag because normally I use the cubes, <laughs> but um, I don't have any cubes right now, and I have this big bag, and I was like, why not? Because I haven't found the Maggie version of the chicken seasoning, so I went ahead and got this huge bag of it, so I used about a half a tablespoon of that. I'm gonna put this on until it is tender. I, I don't know, about 45 minutes to an hour, you guys, or so. It doesn't take long for this, um, but it's once it gets tender, once the meat is cooked all the way through, we do not leave the meat pink or anything like that on the inside. Um, we want it completely cooked through and the seasonings to get into the beef as well. So I'm gonna put this lid on, put this on to about medium high um, until it's cooked through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start making, uh, concocting the peanut butter side of the stew. So next up, you guys, we have these two bowls. I know this looks crazy. I'm gonna explain it in a second, but in this bowl, I have a half a white onion, half a roma tomato, and then about half a can of the a rotel with the diced tomatoes and green chilies, the juice strained, because if not, you can make it a little bit spicy. So this right here, you guys, this mixture that looks like pureed baby food almost. <laughs> so what's actually in here is one full bell pepper, a one and a half aroma tomatoes, um, half of a red onion, half of a white onion, 
because I'm thinking as I'm going here, some minced ginger or minced garlic, excuse me, in water. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. No, I think it's everything. One and a half Roma tomatoes, one full of bell pepper, half a red onion, half a white onion, and about a tablespoon of minced garlic in water. And what you're gonna do is put that in a food processor and kind of pulverize it until it looks like this. And this is a part of the flavor and the, um, and the texture of the peanut butter stew. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of putting everything into the pot for this peanut butter stew. Alrighty, you guys, so I'm gonna try to talk as I do this, <laughs> uh, but uh, bear with me. Okay, so basically I put a little bit of oil in the bottom of this pot. As I said, you guys, I don't use as much oil as they use over there. They use quite a lot of oil um, because they also use that same oil to fry the meat in. So they'll fry the meat in the oil first, pull the meat out of the pot, and then they'll start cooking um, their stew in there. So since I don't do it that way, since I boil it because I want to get some of the broth to add to this, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan, you guys. It's not a whole lot back in the bottom of there. And then the next thing I do is I add some of that Maggie seasoning. So this is going to go in there. And I'm just going to eyeball this as well. So... It's normally one of the cubes. So if you have the cubes, this is much easier, but I don't have any of the cubes right now. So I'm gonna put this into the bottom of the pan. This is about, about not a full tablespoon into the bottom there. And I'm also going to add some of this minced garlic and water. You get this at Walmart as well. I find that when you do the minced garlic and water, it lasts longer than the minced garlic and oil. So that's why I use the minced garlic and water instead. I'm going to do about a full tablespoon of it in the bottom. And then in a moment here, you guys, this is going to start to fry. And I can usually tell when it starts to fry because um, that seasoning begins to kind of uh, sizzle. Um, and that's when I know to start adding in the rest of my ingredients. So now it's starting to fry. I can just hear it. A little bit of the sizzle in there. And so I'm going to go ahead and add in these um, onions and tomatoes and things. Now they look like this because I put them into the fridge when I was about to start cooking. We had to run to the store. So I put them into the fridge. It's perfectly fine, you guys. They're gonna all cook down kind of together. So I'm gonna put these in now. And this is gonna cook for about 10 minutes or so or until these onions become a little bit more translucent. And then I'm gonna move on to the next part of this process. Okay, you guys, so here we are. You guys can see it is uh, quite the sizzle going here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is add in my different seasonings. Now, one thing that I did notice over there is they do not measure. Okay, so when I say they don't measure, um, it's pretty much based off of taste. They eyeball it, and then from their eyeballing, they taste it, see what it looks like, see what it tastes like, move on from there. I cannot remember once watching, watching his mom or anybody cook while I was there that they actually measured their seasonings. So I've been trying to give you guys like a roundabout on that, <laughs> but I'm gonna show you guys how I do it, and we're gonna move from there. So the first thing I'm going, to go in with is some paprika. Now the paprika, this is how I do the paprika. Um, I just see the size of the pot and then I try to cover the entire bottom with it. So, pretty much you can't see. <laughs> and I pretty much do the same thing the rest of the way with everything else. We have onion powder. garlic powder, we got all clustered up in there from the heat, salt, 
And the reason why you can be a little heavy handed on the seasonings, you guys, is because of the peanut butter. The peanut butter is going to overpower everything else if you do not put adequate seasonings in there. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of that Maggie seasoning here in a bit, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna stir it. You see how the color is changing in the oil? That's what you want. So the next thing I'm going to add, I'm using a wide tactic, is going to be that mixture that I showed you guys with the tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, and garlic. I'm gonna put all this in there. Sorry if my hand's blocking, I'm just trying to make sure I get it all out of the bowl. We call this segment cooking with jazz. And you're gonna just stir that in. And it probably, it will mostly disappear. Um, like I said, this is again for getting all your veggies in there evenly, but also for the taste. And what you'll notice when it comes to like African dishes, they are not shy about the oil, you guys. And the dip, the reason for that is um, everything they have is like fresh made. The oils are freshly done, um, squeezed or however they get the oils out of things. Peanut butter is fresh. The meat is butchered that morning. Um, your peanut butter is freshly mashed, your veggies are freshly, everything is fresh. They go and get it that very same day. It was pulled from someone's field or harvested that very same day. So even though they use a lot of oil, as you can see this oil is kind of pulling at the top, that's perfectly fine. That's actually normal for African dishes. Um, they don't really mind because of the fact that everything is so fresh over there every single day. So this is what you're gonna have for just a moment. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in the next thing which is tomato paste. So you guys, they actually use tomato paste there, like a good amount of tomato paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this entire can into this mixture now. Okay, so I have that entire can in here and what you wanna do is go ahead and just kind of get it all mixed around in there as well. Best you can, get it as mixed around as you can. Um, you guys, and basically once it's dissolved, it's, it's, you're not gonna see it, know that it's there for the most part. Um, but tomato paste is something that's also heavily used there. But like I said before, their tomato paste and things is made that day. <laughs> so since sauces are a big, or the stews are like a really big part of their meals, they eat a lot of things with rice. Um, like I said, there's a lot of it made every single day. So that's just another one of the things that's created daily. So I got that good and mixed up in there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is add in my peanut butter and start getting it mixed down before I add in the meat as well as the broth. That's gonna come off the meat and we're gonna also add in a little bit of chicken broth. Because for some reason I like the way the chicken tastes over like the beef. So that's why you see me using the chicken Maggie as, as opposed to the beef because I do have beef. I just prefer the chicken. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my peanut butter, you guys. This is the peanut butter that I use, the Jif Natural. It is separated because that's just oil at the top. It has not gone bad, but since it's more of a natural, low sugar version of peanut butter, I'm gonna use, um, you guys, a good amount, literally somewhere around in here. <laughs> I use a good amount of peanut butter, you guys. It's gonna kind of dissolve and turn this uh, soup into this reddish brown color. So let's go ahead and add in a lot of this peanut butter. So now you're gonna kind of give that a good stir and incorporate that into this. And you'll see that that peanut butter color is going to slowly take over everything else. It's gonna become this reddish brown kind of color. And if it starts to kind of like a clump, that's normal. The peanut butter um, being introduced to a really hot oil and veggies so it'll look like it's kind of curdling but it's not you guys i promise see how it's kind of looking like this 
it's going to smooth out once I start adding in the chicken broth as well as the broth from this meat, which has been cooking over here on the side the entire time I've been doing this part. So I'm going to incorporate that in here in just a moment. Sorry if this is loud, guys. <laughs> it looks like this was an impromptu video. So this is what it looks like now. This pot looks a little bit bigger than my original pot that I used for this. So I'm going to add a little bit more peanut butter to this. This is like pretty much the entire thing, but not fully. <laughs> it's pretty close, so I'll give you guys this. It's pretty darn close to the whole thing of peanut butter. But since this peanut butter is not as sweet, it's, it's going to be something that you won't You'll notice the taste because, you know, if you've had peanut butter, you know you have peanut butter. But it's not going to be as sweet. A lot of people get concerned about the sweetness. Excuse my arm. Get concerned about the sweetness, but it's not going to be as sweet as you think, I promise. So now we're going to go ahead and add in that beef that I was boiling over here on the side. Because it is now done. And you're going to add the beef and the juice all of it all together. I'm going to give it a stir. Mm, chill out. All that burling you got burning on over there. All right. So give it a stir. And that broth is, you see how it's turning like a brown? The broth is now going to start taking over and making the soup into a soup. So it's not going to be as thick. It's not going to be as clunky. It's going to start to boil down and kind of simmer together. And I don't think I'm going to actually need to use my chicken broth simply because that pot that I made the every every pot I've been using so far you guys has been bigger than the pots that I normally use so give this a stir as you guys can see it's starting to get kind of like a creamier consistency it's not as runny nor is it super thick which is typically the concern is it's going to be super thick it's not going to be crazy thick but it, this is very filling, I'll say that. It's crazy filling. Um, I typically can get through uh, multiple bowls of things, but when it comes to this, I do not get through multiple bowls. So now, once we get all of this mixed down, we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on, on low, because the peanut butter can stick and it can burn, you guys. So you wanna put it on low, as low as you can get it, and you wanna keep coming back periodically to check on it, but you wanna let this cook together for about 30 to 40 minutes, um, and then, be ready to serve and you guys are almost forgot you do want to add another about tablespoon of that maggie in there if you have cubes drop another cube or so in there and uh, mix that in as well as you guys can see that the oil is going to start separating and i'll tell you guys about that but at the end the oil will be kind of sitting on the top and that's perfectly normal okay you guys so this is what it should look like you see how the oil kind of pulls to the top that's perfectly normal so because I use a little less oil, that's not so bad, but this is perfectly normal for it. <laughs> and all you're gonna do is just stir it and it's gonna kind of reincorporate itself back into the sauce itself. This oil is not just from the oil that I put into the pan. It's also from the peanut butter, peanut butter, peanut butter, y'all help me, peanut butter. So just stir it back down and it'll all kind of come out looking like that, that brown kind of color. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this down. I already put on some rice. You want to have kind of a stickier rice when you're eating this. They don't eat it with like the slimier consistency rice. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of a sticky. You can use a rice cooker. I just do mine in a little pot. Um, my measurements are two to one. So for every cup of rice, I do two cups of water. I put my water on first on high. Add a little salt to my water. Let the water boil. And once it comes to a boil, add in your rice. Put the lid on and then turn it down to low and then let it cook for about anywhere from 17 to about 20 minutes depending on how much rice you have um, and it usually comes out pretty perfect for me every time so that's how i do my rice you guys are going to see the rice here in a moment but i'm going to go ahead and stir this down and then i'll show you guys what the final product looks like okay guys so it is all finished now this is what it looks like as i mentioned to you guys before it is perfectly normal for that oil to be there normally when you scoop some out it's going to the oil is going to kind of separate anyway like see how the oil kind of goes away from it even if you over here where the oil is it kind of disappears from the top of it 
Um, and if you stir it long enough, the oil kind of mixes back into it anyway. So we are all done. I'm going to plate some of it up for you guys so you guys can see the final product. Alrighty, you guys. So this is the final result of the African peanut butter stew, you guys. The oil separating, as I mentioned before, is perfectly normal when it comes to these African dishes, you guys. But this is the final result, you guys. It is really tasty. It's very creamy. It's very hearty. It's very warm. It's like um, a warm hug on a plate or in a bowl. So I want to thank you all again so much for watching this video. Please let me know if you're going to try this recipe in the comment section down below. And if you do, please let me know if you like it. If you are on Instagram, please take a picture and tag me in it over there. I will leave my handle somewhere on this screen you guys thank you all again so much for watching this video if you have not already please like comment share and subscribe and i hope to see you all in my next one bye guys